I want to talk about uh, Noam Chomsky uh, said something that was amazing. So they were asking him about the Ukraine war. Now, I don't want to go into uh, re-explaining how we got to the Ukraine war. Just so you know, with the reason why uh, we're having a Ukraine war is because the United States overthrew the government in Ukraine in 2014. And then that government that we that we installed, a lot of the people in the eastern part of Ukraine didn't want to live with that government because they were it was a coup government and they were more Russian separatists. And so they had a peace agreement and the government of Ukraine was supposed to leave those people along alone in the eastern Ukraine. They didn't. Not only did they not leave them alone, they bombed them for eight years straight, killing at least 14,000 of them. And so then Putin invaded to try to stop that, among other things. And uh, we've been threatening to put Ukraine in NATO. Plus, there's a gas pipeline called Nord Stream 2. So there's lots of things. It's none of the stuff you hear on the news is why what Ukraine war is happening. So that's what I want you to understand. We provoked this, meaning the NATO and Joe Biden and the United States provoked this confrontation. And we're using the people of Ukraine as cannon fodder. And we all know how this is going to end. It's all it's going to end with a peace negotiation where Putin gets what he wants, meaning a neutral Ukraine. And we all know that's how it's going to end up. So that's what I want, you know, but now and but the weird thing is to see everybody be easily propagandized into wanting to have a war with Russia, which is a nuclear power, which means the end of civilization. So listen to what Chomsky says about this. Who's the one guy who's actually seeking a peace deal? Let's listen to Chomsky. Well, there is fortunately one statesman in the United States and Europe who has laid out a person of a high political figure who has made a very sensible statement about how you can solve the crisis, namely by facilitating negotiations instead of undermining them and uh, moving towards establishing some kind of accommodation in Europe. So what he's saying is, not because we've been undermining, meaning the United States and NATO have been undermining the peace negotiations. So that's what he's saying. Where instead of doing that, maybe a long uh, in which there are no military alliances, but just mutual accommodation. Uh, he didn't say it, but it's something like uh, what George H. W. Bush, the first Bush, not the second. Uh, proposed in the early 90s in his when after the collapse of the Soviet Union proposed what they called a partnership for peace which would be open for Europeans generally Eurasians as well it wouldn't eliminate NATO but he would live up to the promise that NATO would not expand to the east firm promise to Gorbachev keep to that well, NATO there, but kind of de-emphasize it so other countries could join, including Russia for that matter, join the partnership for peace. Uh, Tajikistan joined, for example, not NATO, and move towards a world, a Europe, Eurasia, with no military alliances. Actually, de Gaulle had similar vision. Uh, Emmanuel Macron, in his initiatives trying to contact Putin suggested something similar. So going back to the one Western statesman, he didn't mention all of this, but he suggested something similar. Move towards negotiations and diplomacy instead of escalating the war. Uh, try to see if you can bring about an accommodation, uh, which would be roughly along these lines. Uh, his name is Donald J. Trump. And now you know the rest of the story. Boy, talk about a buildup. Did that guy bury the leader? What? Mm -hmm. But the whole so the whole point of that was Chomsky, who, by the way, is the biggest Donald Trump maniac in the world. There's nobody has Trump derangement syndrome worse than Chomsky. So that's why it's if Chomsky is making the point that the only Western statesman who's offering a peace initiative is Donald Trump, I think we should listen to it. And why should we listen to it? Because let's listen to what he said before about Donald Trump. 
Uh, do you think that this is an uh, easy decision uh, in terms of voting for Biden over Trump or over the Green Party or anyone else, or do you think it's difficult? Well, first of all, I would take the traditional left opinion and say I think it's a completely uh, not even controversial that we should vote against Trump. Now, it happens in the system that exists. Voting against Trump means taking five minutes and pushing a lever for the opposition. Okay, that's a very small part of politics. Politics is the daily activism constantly that's teaching people why Trump is a, one of the fact of the matter, the most dangerous uh, figure in human history. Literally, there has been no one else, Hitler, anyone else, who was dedicated to destroying the prospects of human life on Earth in the next, in the short term. And that's exactly what he's doing. So if you the reason why so there was Chomsky trying to get people to vote against Donald Trump and vote for Joe Biden. And the rationale he gave was he was the most dangerous person, more dangerous than Hitler. Well, now now he's saying, oh, Donald Trump is the only guy who's actually talking about peace. He's the only guy who wants diplomacy in Ukraine. He's the only guy who's trying to avoid World War III. It's Donald Trump, the guy who, well, I, there is. who I used to say was the most dangerous human in the history of mankind, worse than Hitler. And now, well, reality isn't that way. So when we told you that Chomsky was out of his mind with uh, Trump derangement syndrome, we weren't lying. There it is. He was. He's not. He's out of his mind. And now, even a guy who's that uh, gone... That far gone can st still, he's not a liar. Chomsky's not a liar. So he has to tell the truth. And the truth is he watches what's happening. And Trump is the only guy that is pushing for a piece of, uh, and diplomacy in Ukraine. And also, by the way, what other guy on TV besides Tucker Carlson is doing that? Is anybody at MSNBC telling you the truth about Ukraine? Is anybody at CNN telling you the truth about Ukraine? Is anybody else at Fox telling you that? No, it's one guy, and you should all be embarrassed because you say that guy's the worst guy in the world, yet he's outdoing you. You're going to let Tucker Carlson do a better job of reporting on Ukraine than Chris Hayes? Yes, the answer is yes. Tucker Carlson doing a much better job. Trump also proposing peace. It's kind of crazy, isn't it, Kurt? Um, yeah, well, Noam Chomsky, like, I saw him years ago on a, I mean, it was like Penn and Teller's bullshit. And, you know, he, I think that him coming up with manufacturing consent, I think he, like, will s sometimes employ that. Like, yes, you know, he manufactured. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like, he spotted it and then he's not above using it when it, <laughs> like, <Yeah>. suits him. <clears throat> like, uh, I saw him on a Penn and Teller bullshit episode against free speech. He said some well, communities. It was back when they're talking about how on the campuses there was back when it was really starting to brew. He was defending that nonsense. It's such a problem now. It's just funny, like watching him like die. Like I, I don't get what his. Uh, I don't know. He talks out of both sides of his mouth. Put it that way. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes when it suits him, he manufactures consent and uses those techniques that he outlined. And sometimes when it, uh, he also tells the truth, which is what he's doing in this case. So thank God. So that what a shocker. I wonder what people are going to say. Uh, I'm going to guess that most people are going to ignore this, that Chomsky said this. And it, just like they're ignoring the fact that we should have a peaceful settlement, settlement and use diplomacy in Ukraine instead of sanctions and military, $33 billion in military aid. We should be trying to not do that. We should not drag this war out. This is only going to slaughter more people in Ukraine. The more military aid we give them, the worse it is for them. Go ahead, Kurt. I care about the people of Ukraine so much that I would rather they were dead than Putin <laughs> be happy. <laughs> so this, again, this taps into that Trump derangement syndrome. So somehow we can punch Putin in the nose and it's just like punching Trump in the nose. And that's what that's that's how that's how the propaganda is working this time. We're doing live stand up shows in Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Des Moines, Omaha, Kansas City, Las Vegas, all over the country. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for tickets and single tickets now available at all venues. So if you tried to buy one before and you couldn't, single tickets are now available. Plus, while you're at JimmyDoreComedy.com, why don't you become a premium member? Sign up to our mailing list so when they cancel us, we can still stay in touch. Mm -hmm.